Hi friends. The next division is the hostile lay type of mouth parts where the insect use the straw like appendages to suck the sap as they do not feed on the solid food they rely on the uh, liquid food based on that their mouth parts also modified so inside these hostile lay mouth parts there are also two types with the stylet and without the stylet so with the stylet the stylet means the piercing organ the needle like piercing organ which is used to pierce inside the skin of their host to suck the sap the hostile lay type itself there is another type which is known as non stylet type which means those insect they do not have the piercing organ otherwise known as a stylet when the insect that do not have the stylet they have to rely on easily available food like some of the example for that uh, non stylet kind of hostile lay group is the lepidopteran insect especially the butterflies and moths they rely on the easy food the straw like mouth part is called as a siphoning type of mouth part and also there is another kind of mouth part where the stylet is lacking is the rasping and sucking kind of mouth part which is common in the group of thrips the stylet is the modification of the we have already studied about the maxilla mandible and the hypopharynx so these structures are modified into stylet or the needle like structure in order to pierce their host mostly the animals and the plants tissues they can pierce inside and they can suck the plant sap so inside the hastulate type there are two kinds as we have discussed the stylet type and the non stylet type now let us see the insects of the hastulate type with the stylets the stylet type is the first one is the plant bug type or the or otherwise known as the hemipterid type these kind of plant bug type they have the stylet which is made from the maxilla and mandible they are turned into the stylet so there are pair of mandible and the pair of maxilla right so combined together each of them they will be making their own stylet so totally four stylets are formed and uh, these stylets are kept under the groove formed by the labium labium is the below appendage or the lower lip where it is formed into uh, the groove the labium is turned into the beak like the birds some birds are having the beaks like so like that the bug is turned its mouth part into the beak the labium is turned into beak and inside that the stylets are fixed and the stylets made by the mandible and the maxillae they are turned into the stylet or the needle like structure which is kept protected inside the labium the two stylets the maxillary stylet they are having inside the maxilla they are having the groove inside them there is a gap in between the individual maxilla when the maxilla come together facing each other they are having double grooves one line and two line here also one line and another two line so there will be a lining inside that is called as a groove right so when they are fixed together they will form the tube like structure they will be having two canals are there one canal the upside canal will be the foot canal and the downside canal will be the salivary canal so with the foot canal the after the stylets are inside the plant host with the foot canal the sap will be sucked in and in the salivary canal which is below the the salivary canal will be secreting the toxic saliva or the with will be containing the enzymes to degrade the plant tissue it will secrete the saliva through that so with that the stylet can easily pierce inside and they can suck the uh, food material that is needed so when the insect has to feed they will be piercing the stylets inside the tissue of the plant as it is coming under the the most of the insects of the plant bug they have this kind of uh, mouth part that's why they are called as the bug type or the hemiptera type hemiptera means the order of the the bugs so it is coming under the uh, hemiptera type so when they have to feed they will be piercing this stylet made up of the mandibles and maxillae piercing inside the host and they will be sucking the sap from the plant so the next type of hostile type is the piercing and sucking type with the mosquito type or otherwise called as the dipterous kind of type the dipterous order is consist of the flies so the mosquitoes they are having these kind of 
uh, mouth parts especially the female mosquitoes consist of this piercing and sucking mouth part with the six stylets just like the piercing and sucking mouth part of the hemiptera this also having the same kind of stylets but the number of stylets are six in case of the the uh, dipterous type the additional stylets will be formed from the lapium epipharynx as we have discussed the tasting organ right in the chewing and uh, biting type of mouth part in that the in this uh, piercing and sucking type of mouth part in the mosquito type thus labrum epipharynx is turned into the another tube and are the stylet and the next hypopharynx hypopharynx also we have discussed the below part of the mouth part just above the labium this is also turned into the stylet so totally six stylet the six stylets will be kept under the labium as the same uh, like in case of the bug type the mosquito type will also form the the labium will be formed and in the labium labium will be protecting all the stylets so the labium um, the mosquitoes use the labium just like a gun holder and the, from that gun holder the stylet will come piercing the host tissue this is how they work in the hemipterite type of piercing and sucking mouth part we have seen that the maxilla inside they are having double grooves in that when they are facing each other they will form the foot canals and the salivary canals but in case of the dipterous type the modification is done in the epipharynx and the hypopharynx the epipharynx groove or the epipharynx tube is modified into the foot canal by which the food ultimately our blood is sucked and the hypopharynx is turned into the salivary canal as we already discussed that the salivary glands usually opens below the hypopharynx so the hypopharynx is turned into the salivary canals through this salivary canal the in, the insect our mosquito they will suck out the toxic enzymes uh, the function of this uh, toxic fluid is to keep us unaware of when they bite us we would have experienced in our life that when the mosquitoes were biting we were unaware of that the anesthetic chemical keeps us unaware of their biting and the another chemical is produced by the mosquito saliva is the anticoagulant which is that usually when we are injured the blood will come out and after some time it will it will clot so after clotting the blood flow will be stopped but the mosquitoes they the saliva it works very cleverly using the anticoagulant the blood will not coagulate or they will not form any clotting so the after piercing the continuous flow of the blood will be there inside their mouth part with this anticoagulant enzyme so after piercing the hypopharynx will secrete the saliva outside in the host tissue which will keep the blood flow through the foot canal that is formed by the epipharynx the maxilla and mandible they will be acting as a piercing organ which will be like a needle like structure in the terminal area and in the hemipterite type the plant bug type we would have seen that the maxillary pulpi is completely absent in case of hemipterite type but in case of mosquitoes we can see the maxillary growth maxillary pulpi growth is seen so this is about the insect that is with the hostile type of mouth part with the stylet now let's see the hostile type of mouth part without the stylet though these insects are they cannot pierce inside the host tissue as they don't have the stylet they are eating or they are feeding on the fluids that is available in the outside like the nectars uh, which is present in the outside of the flowers or the free fluids outside free fluids that is available in the surface of the land the one example is as we already told about the butterflies and moths they are having the mouth part which is called as the siphoning mouth part in this kind of mouth part the the maxillary part is extended and they form the proboscis which is called as a proboscis as they do not possess the stylet they are bent together these proboscis are formed by especially from the maxillary segment the proboscis is made from the gallia as we already discussed about the parts of maxilla in which we have discussed about the basal part is the cardo and the lateral part is called as a stipes in the stipe the basal part is divided into two part the lobe or the two lobe lacina in the outside and the gallia in the inside right 
so this galia of the maxillae in case of the butterflies they the two galia from the two maxillae they are extended and they form the proboscis which is called as the siphoning mouth part these galia of maxillae they zip together with the spines they form the food canals they do not possess the salivary canals they only possess the food canals to suck the sap or which is present in the outside like the nectar when these proboscis or the siphoning mouth part is not in use they are wind together or uh, like the watch spring and they are kept below when the need or when there is a food available they will be extending it using the pumping of the blood they actually pump the blood into the galia and extend the proboscis and they will feed on the nectars available so other than the maxillary part all other parts are rudimentary or absent so except the some of the labial pulpy and the maxillary pulpy is present the next kind of the hostelate mouth part without the needle is the sponging mouth part in case of the house flies they are having the fleshy mouth part which is made up of the most predominantly by the labium of their mouth part so inside this labium the labium will be grooved inside so in this grooves the both the food canals and the salivary canals will be located the food canals which is formed by the labrum epipharynx and the salivary canal is made by the hypopharynx will be located inside and the basal area of this uh, projection or the proboscis is called as a labellum which is Uh, the larger in size and the upper part the basal part from the mouth part is called as the rostrum and the distal part is called as the hostellum so this end of the proboscis or the hostellum part in the end region is enlarged which is called as a labellum which will be sponge like in structure just like using the cotton sponge end of the proboscis will be there so in in this labellum the micro capillary canals will be there which will be helpful to suck the flu these capillary canals are otherwise called as pseudo trachea which is helpful in the collecting the food in the surface and they are also having the salivary canal so they can break down the food that is available and they can feed on them next hostile producing insect without the Uh, actual stylet is the rasping and sucking mouth part the example of which is the thrips this rasping and sucking mouth part has the mouth cone which is produced from labrum labium and the maxillae and also there are three stylets that is formed from the two maxillae that is the pair of maxillae and the right mandible is absent so only with the left mandible it will form the stylet so totally it will form three stylet inside the mouth cone so these stylets instead of uh, directly piercing inside the plant tissue actually it cannot pierce inside the plant tissue just like the other stylet forming hostelate mouth parts they actually scrap the in, uh, plant tissue just it is known as the laceration it will lacerate on the plant tissue or scrap the plant tissue from that the oozing material the oozing plant sap will be sucked by this cone or the mouth cone in case of the thrips in this case also both the maxillary pulpy and the labial pulpy will be present so this is about the hostelate kind of mouth part so far we have seen the, the both the kind of mouth parts which is starting from the mandible kind of mouth part where the insect actually chews the food and digest them and in case of the hostelate type they actually take the sap from the plant now uh, another kind is there hybrid of to both the biting and chewing and the uh, sap sucking which is called as chewing and labbing mouth part which is present in bees in in our honey bees they have both the labrum and mandible just like our chewing mouth part in the mandible type of mouth part but the mandible is not that much hard it is just rudimentary which is helpful in their hive they are shaping the wax and and constructing the comb such kind of activities are done by the mandible in case of honey bees the maxillary segment and the labial segment they combine together they form the lapping unit the maxillolabial structures they are modified to form the lapping tongue 
The tongue unit, if you see that, it consists of two gallia of maxillae and two labial pulpi and the elongated flexible hairy glossa of the labium. If we see the glossa of the labium, the lower lip, it is actually extended and it forms the spoon-like structure in the terminal portion, which is called as a spoon or boton or the flabellum. It is useful to lick the nectar from the plant. So the next kind of mouth part is the mandibulosuctorial mouth part which is present in the ant lion grub. In their immature stage, the ant lion grub, they will be feeding on the insect using the, their mandible by crushing the insect and inside the mandible, the groove will be there in the, the extended mandible and inside the mandible there will be groove which consists of the maxillae, the maxillae which is actually forming the foot canal, the closed foot channel in which when the victim of the insect, the ant lion, if they are feeding on, they are actually carnivorous insects, they will be feeding on another insect. So when they are, for example, if they are feeding on the aphids, they will be crushing the insect using the mandibles and when they are crushing, the juice will be extracted from the, uh, by the maxillae, they will suck the fruit inside. So this is about various insects, mouth parts and their modification and based on the axis the long axis of the body, the body is in the in this axis, right? Based on the inclination of the mouth parts to the body axis, the insect head is differentiated into three types. So now let's see them one by one. The insect which is having the body in line and the, if the mouth part is vertical to them, it is called as the hypognathus. In the first type, that is a hypognathus head, the long axis of the head is vertical and the mouth parts are ventral, which means the mouth parts are pointing downwards. This type is actually called as a primitive type. This is actually found in the insects like grasshopper and cockroach. Our next kind of head type based on the mouth parts in line to the body line is called as the prognathus head where the long axis of the head is horizontal and the mouth parts are anterior in position and the, when we see that the occipital foramen is slightly inclined. Examples for them are the soldiers of termites and the larva of endoperigota. Body is in straight line and their mouth part also in the straight line. It is called as a prognathus. In this kind of insect, we have studied about the gula, the extra scleride present in case of the beetles. These beetles, they possess the prognathus type of mouth part, which means their mouth part will be forwarded in line with the body line. So, in this kind of a head type, in order to keep the mouth parts forward, the gula region is formed. This gula scleride actually keeps this prognathus mouth parts work. The next kind is the opisthognathus head and in some of the insect, the mouth part is deviated or deflected if the body uh, axis is in the straight line and some of the insect, they possess the mouth part in this way, deflexed way. That is called as the opisthognathus mouth part. In this kind, it is occurs mostly in the homoptera and hemiptera which is the bug type where we can see the head is deflexed backwards so that the mouth parts or the proboscis it is slopes backwards between their front leg. We can see that the beak will be kept in between the front leg. The beak will be formed which is deflexed and they are kept in between. When there, when there is a necessary to feed, they will be taken out and they will be used to feed on the sap. So this is about the head type, insect head type based on their mouth parts inclination to the body line. With this, our insect head portion is completed. Now let us move on to the question part. Question number one. Mosquitoes have dash number of stylets. Three, four, six or they don't have stylets. Question number two is. Gula region is well developed in which type? Hypognathus, prognathus, opisthognathus or none of the above. Hostelate insects feeds on solid foods whereas mandibulate insects feeds on liquid food. True or false? Which head type is primitive one? Question number 5 is Lapping and chewing mouth parts are present in which insect? Question number 6 is Mouth parts present in housefly is called as. Question number 7. 
true or false mosquito saliva contain anticoagulant maxillary pulp is prominent in female mosquito in the opisthognathus head type stylet is present in between the forelegs rasping and sucking mouth parts is present in thrips left mandible is absent in thrips question number 8 is mandibulo sectorial mouth parts is present in which insect comment your right answers below and see you in the next class guys until then bye bye